So today I'm joined by Patrick James Eggle, who is a guitar designer and guitar maker extraordinaire. Hello. Patrick, how are you doing? Very it's well, me. thank you. You too. What I'm most interested in is how you go about making a guitar from design to it being a finished guitar on one of these racks here. When we're designing a new guitar, or we're adapting something or coming up with a new concept, it starts with myself um, and the guys just sort of knocking around ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, it normally transfers from that to, a, to like a line drawing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I get with Sam, who we'll meet in a bit next door, who does our CAD and NC work, mm -hmm. and it'll go onto the computer. It's really useful to be able to kind of build a guitar virtually yeah of course. before you actually build it and then you can check that everything's going to fit and everything's going to work so you can almost test everything out there first we can test everything computer. out because like in the early days when i was a lad and i just built guitars with <coughs> uh, chisels and stuff it was um often a case of um basically getting something halfway built and then realizing it wasn't going to work out for one okay. reason or another would you recommend if anyone's wanting to just start or have a go, get their hands dirty designing a guitar or making a guitar, do you recommend they start with a pack first? My advice mm -hmm. is to work backwards. Okay. So um, I think if you're going to build guitars, the first thing you should do is work setting up finished guitars. Okay. So have an already built instrument and play around with it mm -hmm. and get to, get to understand how they work, get to understand the physics of it, and then maybe buy a kit, and then um, so you don't have all the sort of um, woodwork to actually do. You just understand the assembly, and then when you're happy doing that, then maybe make the body and buy a neck. Mm -hmm. You know, and then so gradually, gradually take on more and more. Mm -hmm. um, working backwards. That's very yeah, interesting. I think that's probably the best way. So um, every guitar build obviously starts with wood. Uh, so here is some wood. On this shelf here we have roasted maple, which is going to turn into necks. See the grain on that? Lovely. Mm -hmm. This is bog oak, 5,000 year old. Wow. It's dug up in the Cambridgeshire Fens. Amazing stuff. We have a bacote, it's a, like a Mexican rosewood. Really, really nice. It's a, Quilted maple um, neck block for a make on. Mm -hmm. Fretboards, albino ebony, black ebony, uh, London plain, bog oak, uh, more Brazilian rosewood. Right. There. And then underneath that, we've got redwood. This is from Northern California. So that's going to be the top of a make on. Mm -hmm. Under here, a huge pile of drop tops. This is for RS style guitars. They're kind of quarter inch thick and they're jointed like this. Mostly, of course, we use maple because that's what everybody likes. And they're all sorted and numbered and catalogued and everything, so I know what I've got in stock. So when it comes time for a build, either I'll select a top for the guitar or the customer will select a top mm -hmm. and take it from there. Here is a roasted maple neck. So we've machined it and this one's been sanded and we stick it back in the stock room until we do the build. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there you go, before and after. That's amazing. So here's a um, piece of roasted bird's eye maple. I'm not sure if you can see that figure there. Bird's eye maple, hence these uh, little dots here that look like bird eyes. Yeah. Bird's eye maple, ebony, bosh. It's the finished neck. How we get from this to this isn't um, <laughs> isn't a quick job. No. But we'll go through that. It's a swamp ash because it grows largely in a swamp, mm -hmm. and uh, which means uh, hot and humid, grows very fast. Uh, the wood is very light and resonant, uh, and this is why we love it. And right here is the body that's been machined. But there you can see swamp ash blank, swamp ash body. This is machined, but it hasn't been touched by hand yet, really. We haven't got our, got our hands on it. Wow, um, okay. So um, this has yet to be sanded. Uh, that's where the real work starts. Every time we build, has a spec sheet, so we know what we're building. So 
where you can actually see. There's the spec sheet. This is the guitar. We've got, I just put a label in here with relevant information for me in case I do anything goofy when I'm spraying it so I don't do anything wrong. <laughs> um, and uh, this has got like a really, really lovely kind of a 3A grade Eastern Maple top. The Eastern Maple is harder, it's got a different look and it's what they would have used on the classic old guitars in the late 50s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, and it's got a Honduran mahogany one piece back. We can weigh the mahogany and we can weigh the maple. We'll know how much we need to chamber it or not. Written on the shipping scales here, look. It says make on two pounds, 15 ounces, right? That two pounds, 15 ounces is the weight of the neck, the hardware, you know, all the pickups, the hardware, the chains, yeah. the strings, everything, right? So we know from the weight of the body, when the body's at this point, we can weigh the body and we can add the weight of the neck to the weight of the body and we'll know the finished weight mm -hmm. of the instrument. It's just really useful to know because yeah, we're kind of, of going to target weight that we're after. Right, this is our CNC outer. Um, this is important because um, it does all the routing of the profile of the guitar and the pockets, like the neck pocket and the control cavity. Um, the best thing about it, to be honest with you, is that it's really safe. You set mm. the thing up, set the machine going, close the doors, mm -hmm. you know, walk away, and no one's going to lose any pinkies, which mm -hmm. is what I really like about it. But the other important thing is that it's really accurate. And building guitars, you want the geometry to be absolutely perfect, mm. right? That's the first thing. You want it to be, um, you want the fret slots to be in the right place and the right depth, etc., etc. Um, you need everything to fit together geometrically um, and then when it comes off here um, and we get our hands on it that's when the magic happens and that's really important. So speaking earlier about this um, custom Oz T drop top um, and one of the things that's custom about this is it's having Celtic knot inlays. So there's the fretboard and you can see the, wow. the inlay pockets have been cut and this is the neck and in fact that fretboard came off the same neck blank as the neck okay so oh, it was okay. originally one piece of wood yeah like this and we sliced the top off that piece of wood which is where the fretboard comes from and then the fretboard is glued back it's glued back in the same place that it used to be on the neck. Ah. So that when you look at the grain on the edge of the neck... It will all match. It will match. So the flames will go straight through uh, the side of the neck and into the fretboard. And it will look like one piece of wood, which it indeed was yeah. originally. Uh, so we have some here that have just been birthed by the looks yeah, of it. <laughs> just been birthed. <laughs> right. This is a make-on... It's got the uh, CNC, so it's basically rough carved. So we can see it's still got rough edges because it's that's got rough from edges. Where it was it's cut. got carving marks, which you may not be able to see there because we can just about run a very long program with the CNC, so at least quite a good finish. But basically, this now has to be sanded by hand, mm -hmm. and there's probably about three or four hours work. Um, that's when I do it, on quite fast. Um, so maybe more than that in sanding this uh, guitar so it's kind of ready to have the neck glued in mm -hmm. so this is um, obviously one that's had the neck glued in has a one piece redwood top uh, and these tops are absolutely stunning we sort of double stain these and then the flame really really stands out um, the 320 there denotes uh, the grit of paper that it's been sanded to. So 320 is sort of in the middle, it's fairly fine, it's not super fine. It's not finished yet by any means, but it's getting there. So one piece of redwood top, one piece of mahogany back, trapezoid frame inlays there. Those are um, mother of pearl mm -hmm. outlines. Now that's been carved there with a chisel, but it's all awaiting final kind of titivation and final sanding and all that kind of thing before it goes into the spray shop. Mm -hmm. 
So this is one that's halfway through being sprayed. Um, it was uh, final sanded uh, to about 400 grit, and then we put um, a uh, like a light brown stain in the top, sanded it back with 500 grit uh, paper, and then we stained it. This one is a honey burst, so we stained it with a lovely warm honey colour wood wood stain then base coated, nibbed it back, masked off the back and the sides, and then I sprayed the burst on. So um, this, this has had now five coats of lacquer and it's been flatted back. So what you're seeing here is a lacquer guitar, but it's non-shiny because it's halfway through the process. Mm -hmm. um, this afternoon probably it'll go back into the spray shop and it'll have the top coats put on it and then it'll start looking all lovely. And then behind it, this is a guitar we were talking about earlier, which mm -hmm. is the RST drop top. So super high grade quilted maple top, which has been bent down over Swamp Ash back. So the top is now four and a half millimeters thick, or 4.6 millimeters thick, if you want to be picky. Um, and we've basically cut curves in the underside of it, in the underside of this, this top, and then it's bent down um, in a vacuum press. One piece swan patch back, which has got like a, a translucent white finish over that. And then we've done like a real bright, kind of an island blue burst over the top. Gorgeous, absolutely stunning. You can almost jump real, into it and swim into it's it. It's a real showpiece, that one. <laughs> this is a master grade neck for panels, uh, so you can see the flame in that. This has mm. been sprayed, and uh, you see uh, there it says V, that's so I know it's our vintage finish, it's 58 formula finish. Um, mm. So it's um, a nitro cellulose lacquer that was formulated in 1958. The recipe hasn't basically changed since, so they use natural oils in the lacquer rather than modern elasticizers. When it's cured, uh, after about two or three weeks. We flat and polish it. And then what we can do, if we choose, is we can heat check it. So we'll sort of mimic what uh, those early guitars would have gone through when they went from like a hot car um, wow, okay. to freezing cold outside. Yeah, just in travel. Like an aeroplane or something. And this is where you get all those kind of, um, kind of microscopic cracks going across the... Uh, headstock and across the actual body. So what we'll do is we'll actually polish this, give it some heat with a hairdryer or something, and then we stick it in the chest freezer mm -hmm. for about four hours, bring it out, maybe repeat the uh, process. And um, it's a bit of a faff, but it it's really cool. It gives you that vintage it look. Yeah, it's the vintage look. It isn't a Rex guitar. Mm. It's just a vintage look, lacquer. It's just going through the same process as those guitars went through. Yeah, exactly. As you can see, I hope, we've only lacquered the headstock mm -hmm. and the heel. So nitro finish on the heel and on the headstock. We need the nitro finish on here because it kind of protects certain things like the serial number and of course the logo. Mm -hmm. And it looks a little bit nicer, brings out the uh, flame as well. But we leave the back on the feel. After we've flattened and polished the lacquer, on the headstock and the heel, then we'll basically go over the back of the neck with um, gunstock oil, uh, just to give it a really nice slick feel, but completely non-sticky. Okay. So it's got that completely worn through, I actually call it a worn through finish on the neck. Yeah. Uh, and it just makes it feel really nice and natural and comfortable, and not like a brand new guitar, which is what you don't want brand new guitars to feel brand new. Yeah. You don't want to feel like an old pair of jeans or something. Yeah, you know, it's just, true. just really comfy. This is a tobacco burst. See what we've got made from for our friends at Kaufman's Guitar Store in the Netherlands. Rock inlays, Eastern Maple top, a really traditional tobacco burst. I really like tobacco bursts. I'm a sucker for them myself. <laughs> this is probably. Um, if I was to keep one for myself, this is probably very, very similar to uh, the sort of thing that I'd hang on to, I think. It's got the easy access there. 
And this one's going to have a P90 in the neck, humbucker in the bridge, which is a killer combination. I love it. Absolutely. You get, um, you get three or four really different, really usable um, sounds. You know, the P90 on its own, obviously, is brilliant. Um, humbucker on its own is obviously... What's awesome. a humbucker of choice for you? My the pal bridge? Mark Ransley at Mojo Pickups makes... Um, almost all of our pickups they're hand wound and but he also does a bridge humbucker which is fairly hot without being kind of compressed I don't mm-hmm. know how he does it somehow um, but it's a very popular pickup um, it's got good drive and um, when you split it when you basically coil split it it still sounds really really good we were looking at some 96 drop tops earlier uh, so this is one kind of finish. This is going to uh, our friends Fanatic Guitars in Barcelona. Lemon burst top, very light in the centre. I'm um, just really happy with the way that that came out. And what we did on this one was we um, did this kind of um, grained look on the back, but I bursted it. So we basically put the burst with a spirit based stain straight into the wood. And then I base coated it and then I did the pour filling with the opposing colour and then we top coated it so it's a slightly different method and it was the first time I tried it I tried doing this looks and good I hope you like it I think it looks really effective I mean often the backs oh. don't get enough attention do they indeed oh. indeed they need to look good everywhere so I think this looks sort of as good from the back as it does from the top actually. absolutely we like to do small things that are ergonomically you know an improvement on, Absolutely. Uh, maybe classic designs. So this one's got a slipper heel joint. Mm-hmm. So the actual neck continues right back um, under the neck pickup. Oh, okay. Um, it comes back to round about here. So it's got a long footprint. It's got a very good um, join. Mm-hmm. It's a wood actual join there. Um, but it's also got this lovely um, kind of easy access mm. heel here. Um, and this is all carved out by hand um, here. Thank you very much for joining me, Patrick. You can find out more about Patrick and the Barnes and Mullins links that we have in the description below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.